Thank you very much for coming out. And um, my name is Brad Badgero. I'm the major for uniform operations for Chesterfield County Police Department. And what I'd like to do is read an updated release for what happened last night and then give you a, a, a brief PowerPoint and overview of what we know to date and then have a time for question and answers and then we'll go from there. Okay? I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Okay, I'll speak up. <clears throat> you got it. Chesterfield County Police continued to investigate a fatal shooting that occurred in the 10,960 block of Stepney Road at about 10.21 p.m. on June 3rd. Police responded to the area of Stepney Road and Weybridge Road for a report of shots fired. During the course of the investigation, police determined a total of six people were shot and two others suffered non-firearm related injuries. At this point, the investigation indicates more than 50 shots were fired at the scene. When officers arrived on scene, they found an adult male identified as Tabori J. Carter, 20 years old, suffering from a gunshot wound. Officers rendered emergency aid to Carter of the 21,100 block of Bailey's Grove Drive in Chesterfield, but he died at the scene as a result of his injuries. The five other shooting victims who appeared to have non-life-threatening injuries had left the scene and gone to area hospitals or other locations before police arrived. The investigation indicates the two victims with non-firearm related injuries were struck by vehicles as they fled from the shooting. Police continue to investigate. Anyone with information is urged to contact the Chesterfield County Police Department at 804-748-1251 or Crime Solvers at 804-748-0660 or through the P3 app. Okay. So we wanted to give you an idea of what it was that brought all this to uh, occur last night. Um, this is a screen grab of the Instagram invitation for the party that occurred. As you can see, there's no address given, but it's kind of like a, hey, come on out, uh, hit me up if you want address. Um, and so what we determined was there were between 50 and 100 people that showed up at the party. When our officers arrived, as we indicated, we found one uh, gentleman who was deceased from gunshot wounds. There were a handful of people in the area. Uh, a number were detained for some time, trying to figure out what they were doing, why they were there. Uh, people in the house, people in the, in the neighborhood, people in vehicles, things like that. If you can go to the next slide. So this is a, a shot of the incident location right there at the intersection of Waybridge and Stepney. The next slide gives you a little bit bigger overview for where that is in Chesterfield. You can see Thomasdale High School down here where 288 comes and hits Route 1. So that's the, the general area where the party happened. And then if we can skip to two more slides. This gives you an idea of our victims. As I already mentioned, uh, Mr. Carter is our decedent and our five victims who suffer from various gunshots give you their ages and where they're from. One of the things I want to highlight is that this is not just a, a Chesterfield centric issue as, as we have determined the flyer that went out or the announcement on social media uh, invitation really generated some interest from uh, people from all over the place and so you see that our our victims range from Hopewell to Prince George Dinwiddie and then uh, the two who did not suffer gunshots who were injured in in a vehicle as they were trying to get out of there um, were from Hopewell and Richmond so from all over the Tri-Cities and Richmond area really um, if you can go to the next slide so one of the things that we would really like to enlist some support from is our community. Uh, we have a long-standing positive relationship with the citizens of Chesterfield County. And um, we know that there are people out there who know what happened. Like I said, there were between 50 and 100 folks who were there. Uh, and we think that many of them were underage. Uh, our victims range from 16 to 20 years old. So parents, if you know that your kids were out last night and you're not quite sure where they were or you're a little suspicious about what might be going on, we'd like to ask you for your help. Uh, check with your kids. 
engage with them, uh, see what they were doing, and give us a call if you have any information that can help us with this. As you can imagine, anything uh, involving a party like this, we know that there's going to be cell phone video. We know that there's going to be uh, lots of people recording things. So uh, we'd like to ask for people, if you have that or you know what happened, to uh, send that in as well. Um, as you can see on the slide, we're looking for any security camera footage, ring doorbell, anything like that from the area, Stepney Road and Weybridge Road. And obviously these are our phone numbers just like was in the release. We'd like you to call those numbers if you can assist us. One of the things that I really want to highlight is uh, the positive relationship that we have with our community here in Chesterfield. We have uh, detectives and officers who do really good work and uh, we know that they are going to put their heart and soul into solving this case and figuring some things out, but we also rely very heavily on our partnerships with the community. So um, we just look forward to uh, moving forward and getting some closure for the, the victim and the victims and um, working towards not letting this happen in our community again. Okay, so that's the, that's the overall picture. What questions do we have? Did we have a chance to talk to any of the, the injured? Yes. Um, so they they were. Uh, so here's here's what happened. Um, one victim showed up uh, at a restaurant parking lot. One showed up in the Thomas Dale uh, parking lot. Um, one went to the Tri Cities ER. One went to John Randolph, and I'm not sure where the other one went right now. Um, but. As you can imagine, you have a, a scene of this magnitude uh, at, the, at the map that you saw. So we have a lot of resources that need to go there, but our folks were spread out all over the place interviewing these folks. Um, so they didn't just stay there, they got transported to area hospitals, and so we sent personnel up there to uh, interview them about what they saw, what they knew, things like that. Do you have any idea of how many people were firing gunshots at the party? So I can tell you that we have identified four different caliber of, of casings that were found on scene. So whether that means it was four people shooting, I can't tell you that. Um, but it looks like there are at least four different weapons that were fired. Do you know when that flyer started circulating on social media? I don't know. No, I don't. Was police made aware of the... No, we did not. So we, we found that afterwards. You know, we're trying to figure out, hey, how did this party show up? You know, what's going on here? And uh, our investigative personnel found that. You know the type of firearms involved based on the caliber? I, I don't know. Uh, I know that Investigations does have an idea based on the casings that were found, but I personally don't have that information. Was the party for a Thomas Dale student? That's my understanding, yes. Graduation party? Yes. Any adults, parents? So my understanding is that there was a, a lady who lives at the house where the party uh, was held. The resident, not that, that lady, but she's an adult. Uh, her grandson, I believe, was hosting the party for another Thomas Dale graduate. Did anyone happen to call police before gunshots that it started to get loud or too many people? Yes, we, we had a call for uh, loud music, disturbance, uh, that held for a while, and then when the shots fired call came in is when we responded. Did you respond when you got the first calls about the disturbance and loud music? No, in fact, um, I looked up what we were busy on that kept us from going to a disturbance of the loud music. That's not uncommon uh, if we're busy to let a loud music kind of hold for a little while. Um, but so at the exact same time, we were on calls that involved uh, a larceny from auto over in Moores Lake. So that was involving a bunch of juveniles that were breaking into cars. We had a lot of resources there because we caught them and we had to you know, figure out all the victims there and then take them to juvenile detention. Uh, other calls involved a 14-year-old suicidal suspect who uh, was threatening to burn his house down, a motor vehicle accident with a DUI, a disturbance at a group home, 
and a abduction that was a priority response. It was a reported abduction, and so we had uh, a number of officers respond there. So, as you can, you know, kind of tell. Deployed to all of those. Yeah, we were we were busy on all that. So when you hear those compared to what's what we first get as a disturbance or loud music, um, that'll hold for a little bit. But then obviously when the the shots fired call came in is when we left the other stuff pretty quickly and showed up. And how many of those disturbance calls were there? Uh, I know that there were at least three um, that came in that just said, hey, loud music, lots of kids in the area, that kind of thing. Typically speaking, I mean, how many calls would it take for police to decide to then? I, I don't know that you can really say there's a typical, because if it's, it, loud music is loud music. That's what we know, right? And so when you're comparing it to what we have with all these other things, uh, an abduction call, a uh, disturbance at a group home where somebody's acting up, um, a suicidal teenager, things like that, uh, those take priority to a, a disturbance. So there's no real typical, you know? If we didn't have all that other stuff going on, then we would have been there. Do you know what led up to the shooting? Was there a fight that broke out or an argument? Yeah, good question. So um, my understanding is that prior to the shooting call coming in, there were uh, two separate fights or, or disturbances, if you want to call it that, between females. So there is a, a fight between a couple females. I'm told that that was broken up. And then shortly after that, another fight started. And then very shortly after that is when the shots fired call came in. And just to review, you said there were between 50 and 100 people at this party? That's what, that's what we understand the to be. The majority of them were outside? Yes. Okay. This was an outdoor party mainly or an indoor? You know, I can't tell you what it was designed to be necessarily, but, but from the calls that came in, uh, it sounds like there is, you know, a lot of disturbance outside, um, music, loud voices, cars, you know, that kind of thing. So you all got calls about the two separate female fights? No. No, that, we, that's what we found out afterwards. Like, all right, hey, this is what we're here for, what happened, and talking to the people that we were able to find. And the third? fight or whatever, was that also between females or? So I, I'll, all I know that what was reported to me is that we had two fights between the females. I don't know that they were the same females. Uh, and then shortly after that is when the shots fired call came in. I don't know that there was a third fight. And it seems like there was a, a big fraction of people that came in from outside of the Thomas Dale community to this party. That's what it seems, yes. Mm -hmm. Especially based on our, our victims that are all over the place in the Tri-Cities, Richmond area. Anything else? We know anything more about the victim, um, the deceased? His relationship to the party? No, I don't. I don't know what his really. My understanding was that he attended Thomas Dale in the past. Did he graduate? I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know the connection, why he was there necessarily. Um, don't cover Chesterfield, please. Just in six people getting shot at one time is a lot of people. I mean, where is this in the annals of mass shootings in Chester? Well, uh, I've worked here for about 30 years, um, and I don't know that I can speak to the, the annals of, of mass shootings in Chesterfield. That would, I guess, preclude that we did have mass shootings. Um, so, and, and I think probably that mass shooting, um, you know, has some different connotation to it, right? as far as how, how people might interpret that. Um, this is, to me, different than some of the things we've seen recently on the news that we might interpret as a mass shooting. Uh, th this is obviously a senseless act uh, that you know, we are concerned about that comes into our community. Um, to me, it's a way that we can partner with our community in a way to really share our message and our uh, support of, of what's happening uh, in and around where we live and work and play. Um, 
it certainly isn't anything that occurs on a regular basis here. That's for sure. Yeah. In your 30 years, are you aware of six people being shot at? Uh, not, not outside of something like a murder-suicide situation. I can't, I can't think of one offhand. That doesn't mean it didn't happen, but I just can't think of one. Do you think there's anything police could have done earlier in the night to prevent it from getting out of control? No, I don't think so. Um, you know, you asked all the questions about what happened prior, right? Um, and I think if we had a crystal ball and we knew what was going on, then we might have been able to do something else. But uh, under the circumstances, we need to go on the priority calls. And that's what we did. When this one became a priority, we were there. Um, you know, we do a pretty good job. We have a, an investigative team, obviously. We have an analytical team. We have a media team. And we often get the heads up on things like this, right? Parties that we think, okay, this might really turn into something bigger than, than what we uh, would like it to be. Uh, whether it's at a private residence or, you know, some type of other party that just doesn't um, look like it's going to be safe for people. So I say that to say that we are often able to get ahead of things if we know about them ahead of time, right? So sometimes people will send us the, like the screenshot there and say, hey, y'all might want to be aware of this kind of thing. Um, and in that case, we're able to get our community engagement folks on it, um, our analysts, our media folks, and, and really look into what that might be and have a plan. In this case, we didn't have that heads up. Um, so it's certainly unfortunate. Are you concerned about any possible retaliation? There's nothing that we know of right now. Obviously, there, there, anytime you have different groups who are shooting, right? Uh, obviously, there were more than one here. Um, there may be something, but there is nothing right now that would tell us that there is any gang affiliation or anything, you know, that this particular group needs to be aware of or uh, for retaliatory purposes. Um, we will share all of this with our partners in the Tri-Cities in Richmond to just say, hey, in case you didn't know, this happened here. It involved people from your jurisdiction, just as a heads up. Um, but nothing that on its face says, okay, we better watch out because this person is affiliated with this or anything like that. So just so I'm clear, you would characterize this as a gunfight? As a what? A gunfight, people shooting at each other as opposed to one or two people shooting. You, you know, I'm not, I'm not able to say that right now. Um, from what I'm told, there were, there were at least uh, three or four different locations where the, the casings were found. I don't know if, if it was people running and, and, and shooting as they're going. Um, and I don't know if it was people shooting at each other. I can't tell you that. You can make some assumptions, right? But, uh, but I can't do that right now. Um, I, didn't, I cannot recall in the previous, was, was gender listed among the, the, the shooting victims? I don't believe it was, but we have that. It's, it's a fight that started among females. Yeah, and you know what, I, I apologize. I, I have that information in the office, I don't, have it here, right here. I do. I can tell you that the two with non-firearm related injuries are females. They were both trying to get out of there and got caught up in, in falling down or getting hit by a car. Do you recall if any of the shooting victims were female? Give me a second. I can look at that right now. No. I'm being told no. They're not. What kind of other questions do we have? Is there anything you want to say of reassurance to that community of maybe their family will on edge today? Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, can you imagine if, if you were uh, a neighbor to, to this? You'd, you'd probably be a little bit on edge, wouldn't you? Um, I would too. Um, but there is nothing that indicates that, first of all, in the area or any type of a history, that this is something that is going to occur again. Um, this is an isolated incident, um, and you know it looks to be by uh, young people, uh, many of them juveniles, who uh, obviously weren't making good decisions, and um, had 
you know, whether or not there was other stuff going on at the party that uh, contributed to them making those poor decisions. Um, but obviously we want our community to feel safe, to know that they're safe in Chesterfield County, um, and just know that number one, this is an isolated incident. Number two, that we are deploying all our resources to determine exactly what happened and bring those uh, who are responsible uh, to account for what they did. Before you all leave, the one thing I, I did want to again highlight is the partnership that we have with our community here in Chesterfield. I think it's something very special. Um, many of you know about National Night Out. Uh, it's uh, put on by National uh, Town Watch Association. Um, neighborhood Watch, you're familiar with that. So um, I'm not familiar if this neighborhood has a neighborhood watch in place, uh, but if any of your viewers or any of our community are interested in uh, learning more about Neighborhood Watch, they can get in touch with the police department. We can set them up. Um, that's always a good partnership between the police department and the community. We also have a National Land Out event that's occurring right now at our fairgrounds right down the street. So if you have a few minutes and you wanted to stop by to interview any of those folks or see what's going on, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, Chesterfield County uh, has come in in the top 10 for like-sized communities, over 300,000 uh, in the nation over the past 10 years. Uh, we've come up in the top 10 for that, um, which we're very proud of, which does indicate the relationship we have with our, our community. Um, so I just wanted to leave you with that before you had an opportunity to jet out on me. Does this particular neighborhood, community, whatever, have a name, or is it part of Chester, or where? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, can you go back to the map? Yes. You want the do, you, do you have any idea, anybody else? In Mineola. Mineola. Does it count as Mineola? Okay. Mineola. Mineola. M-I-N-E-O-L-A. One N. One N. One N. Is that a neighborhood of Chester or South Chester? Feel how would you describe that? It's in the same. Brad, do you know? Chester. Chester. Mm -hmm. I think it's Chester. Chester. Yeah. Same. So it's it's right it's right in this area here. Two eighty eight is here. It's right up here. This is a map. This is a map of our Appomattox division. We have three divisions in the county. Um, just that that's why it's color coded that way just contextually this is not a community that you, um, would be a place where violence or no no this nature typically happens. no I'd like to say that we don't have any of those communities in, in Chesterfield right um, but I can't think of the last time something of this magnitude first of all happened but uh, in that area so that's another reason why, yes, I understand people being a little concerned, but historically, there's no, no concern there. All right. I think that's it. Everybody good? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.